when I'm in the studio, what I like about that is that it's not limited by time in that the painting takes as long as it takes. There's no pressure in that respect. And for me, it allows me to go deeper into the inquiry because I, I begin the process. I, 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 I have a, a fairly certain idea of what it is I'm wanting to deal with. And I will initially sketch it out with the paint and, and uh, continue. But through that process, which usually starts out with me being in control of the situation, what happens is that at some point, I lose control. And at the point where I lose control and I feel like throwing the brushes in the air, I find that if I persevere and stick with it, that it's at that point that the painting starts to reveal new things to me. And in those moments, if I connect properly with it, what can happen is that essentially the possibilities are opened up in ways that I couldn't have dreamed of otherwise. So if I can embrace those elements, sometimes I can, I can work with them to, 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 to re redeem what would otherwise be a failure. And, and that's the nature of painting. The true nature of painting, in a sense, is the connection of the artist and the through the materials onto the in inanimate object, which in this case is, is a painting on a wall, trying to move around marks, which are essentially pigments, in my case, oil pigments, that were in the ground at one stage and then became mixed with a binder and then applied onto this border canvas in a series of abstract marks. That's really all that they are. But what's quite amazing for me is that as an artist, I can put these abstract marks together in certain ways that create meaning and create feeling. And through this interaction with the painting, when it's working and I'm connecting with it, that process allows itself to be revealed. So in a sense, when I'm working at it closely like this, I, I, I'm semi-aware of what's happening, but at the same time, that's not fully apparent until I take a few steps away from the painting. And that, that happens at a point where usually I have problems and there, there's nowhere else I can go with it. So I need to take a few steps back to actually see what the problems are. And this can happen over a period of days, weeks, even months, I can go back to it. It's such a delusory process in that one would think that having painted for so many years that you would learn so that you wouldn't make the same mistakes, but it doesn't seem to happen because every time something new will be thrown up and what you thought was okay one day will not be okay the next day. And I think, as I walk into the studio and see this more often than not, I think, why is it possible that I missed seeing that obvious area which doesn't work with the rest of it? So that's why it's not only important to be involved in the process and the activity of it, but it's also very important to spend time looking at what you have. So it's at those times of contemplation that one is able to really decide which direction it's going in and how much more work is required, if indeed any. And also what I love about that process is that when I'm working closely, and it is a series of these abstractions in a sense, and the marks and the nature of the way that I'm making the marks in this gestural way allows me to, to ingest feeling into the, the work, which I wouldn't otherwise be able to do if I was too fussy with, with detail. And when I go away from it, those abstractions become more focused. And in fact, the further you remove yourself from it, the more clear it becomes. So in a sense, there's a contradiction there, which is that the further away you become, the closer you get to it. So I think that's quite a, quite a nice little, uh, little situation in the sense that that can happen and does happen. In the case of this painting, I haven't stained the canvas, but Sometimes I do stay in the background completely. Here I'm using a sepia colour using a burnt umber, which I find a great colour to use to give me the darks and the lights 
through the values of uh, the initial stages to give me an idea of um, how it's going to work. One then begins to work with colours and makes changes to structure, composition, all the way through this, even though one has been doing it for many years, you still have the same problems, or maybe sometimes different problems in a sense, but um, the nature of it is such, and I suppose that's the reason why one keeps get drawn, getting drawn back into the next one is because there is always something new to find and another way to do it and you can never know how to do it. You can never really fully know how to paint as well as you possibly can do because it will throw up things that you haven't been able to address and new things that need to be worked upon. Uh, for me, the best painting uh, goes beyond this type of process and involves the feeling and connection that I as an artist need to have with what I'm putting on the, on the painting surface. So this is something which I strive to do and is always a necessity in order to create work which is relevant or has importance or meaning for me otherwise it becomes a technical exercise which is a complete waste of time why bother The problem with trying to record the process and evolution of a painting lies in the fact that there is a big distortion of time and in many ways that was a reservation I had uh, to begin with before I began because I know that the process takes a long time and that's very difficult to convey, or that aspect is very difficult to convey in a short film. So, one of the main things that happens during the creation of a painting is that a lot of time is spent looking at what has been previously done. Uh, it continues to lull us into this false sense of security each time we approach the, the work. We work through it, we make adjustments, we make changes, hoping they're the correct changes. And uh, more often than not, sometimes in despair, that's when uh, new things happen and other avenues are opened, become more obvious. 
But what I've found with my work is that on those times when I leave the paintings aside and look at them out of the periphery of my vision, then after a while I do notice things that uh, have been incorrect and need to be further worked upon. It is an ongoing dialogue with what you're trying to do and what you're seeing in front of you, because ultimately until that finished brush stroke that completes the work, um, it's not it's not finished. And I personally found that um, if there are areas that slightly bother me, then I know definitely that uh, there's something wrong which has to be addressed. You, you cannot get away from it. You cannot avoid this scenario, this situation, because uh, you will be on happy and uh, things will not be as good as they could be and saying that another problem with looking at a film of a process of painting is that the viewer can sometimes be lulled into thinking that there's a very definite process that's followed from beginning to end and if you follow that process that that's all that's required in order to make a good work for me there doesn't seem to be any painting which is straightforward in a sense and um, looking at the process in this way, through a, in a filmic way, where it's speeded up and uh, even the, the, the nature of application of the paint is, is, is distorted in a sense because the, the process is a much slower one. Um, the, the film gives a tendency to think that um, everything happens really quickly, but uh, it's prohibitively long and impossible to film the whole process in real time because it would, would just take too long and it probably isn't necessary either in a way. Uh, this may give people an idea of uh, what's behind it. And what the film illustrates as well are the physical aspects of the, the movement of paint and marks and the drawing uh, within, within a work. So that's all very well, but what the film doesn't really get across is the psychological input within the work, i.e. the connection that's more than just a physical connection, the, 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 the subliminal subconscious things that crop up during the process that I'm even unaware of as I'm doing it. So, so you know, it's to do with the connection that I talked about as well this connection that you have when you're in the zone making the work and you're wanting to do one thing but the brush is doing something else so in a sense when you do go with it and you're in that zone then great things can happen. Uh, a danger can be overworking as well and taking it further than it needs to be taken and as a result losing that um, instinctive kind of um, energy that uh, it contained before. So it's important also to know when the work is finished. But the process is the magical thing really for me because it takes you on that, takes me on that journey through blankness into something which is a, a journey for me and it's a bonus if I end up with a good painting in the end. It's always good to move on to the next one. But equally encouraging to have completed another one. <laughs>